Alrighty then, boys and girls. So if you don't know, I've been away from Fortnite and just gaming in general uh, because I was traveling and I went back home. But what I did while going back home was basically I only had access to my PS4, so I played the PS4 uh, and God of War on the PS4, which is like an amazing game. It's like 9 out of 10. I finished the game, finally, and uh, it took me about two weeks or maybe a little bit more than that, maybe 20 days or so. That's because I didn't have that much time to play. I just played like... I played like two, three hours on some day, maybe four, five, six hours on one day, and then I couldn't play for the next three days and kept on going like that. But this game is so good, and it is so different from any other God of War game that I think I would I want to share the the things that I learned in this game about after playing about sixty hours in this game. <laughs> the things that I learned that are not that are not so simple and that aren't that easy to uh, to learn and or to understand. Uh, so let's see. I made a list of some of the things. So the difficulty settings, right? So the first thing that you want to uh, fix, let me just check if it is recording as it is. So the first thing you want to check is uh, the difficulty settings. And now, when I started off this game, so you press start, you go uh, press triangle, you get into the settings menu. If you if you look at this, I, I'm probably at the highest. Oh, it's at the store. Give me a story. I don't even know why I went down there. But I've been playing this almost the entire entirety of this game on Give Me a Challenge, right? So when I started off this game, uh, I started off with Give Me a Challenge. The problem is the combat in this game is very different from any other God of War game. It's not a top-down uh, hack and slash game where you just press square and triangle and you keep doing like your light and heavy attacks. It's it's really difficult and it has the parry system, it has the block system, it has a dodge system. All of these things are new that they, they never existed in any of the previous games. So if you want to learn the game, my suggestion would be start off at, at like uh, give me a balanced experience or if you really want to go for like uh, go for it and go on super easy. But the thing is if you go on super easy, you're going to one shot everything and you're not going to learn how to dodge and do anything else. So you can start off on normal mode and then eventually uh, as you keep getting stronger and stronger and you understand the game, you understand how to block, uh, how to parry, how to dodge and stuff like that, then you move on to the uh, give me a challenge experience. The thing is when I started off at this one, I died like at least four to five times in the tutorial like the first enemies in the game that come up because the game doesn't teach you how to block how to parry dodge or do anything it just tells you do it just fight so you can either button mash which is what i started doing or you can like eventually learn or watch a video or something but the thing is you have to learn all of the things so all of those things so you, uh, my suggestion would be start off uh, learning from normal and then keep moving on from there um now when you're doing this sort of normal move with or without the immersive hud now there's there's another video that says uh, basically play on immersive hud and i'll show you what an immersive hud looks like what the fuck? um no back off uh where's the immersive hud immersive hud oh there you go so i did play on yeah actually mine is on so i made it on custom so people, the the way the custom works is it, it, it i'll show you how it works so if i go back it ideally shouldn't show me anything so as you can see, I don't see anything besides the the compass on top, right? But if I start, if I block, or if I start moving, or if I start fighting, or I press anything on the touchpad, that's when you can see everything: he traces arrows, your runics, attacks, and everything else. So that's how I'm playing, and uh, I find that to be like the best mode. But if you want to play completely immersive, uh, Atreus is going to tell you everything what what you're supposed to do, so you don't have to worry about that at all. Um, the immersive HUD is really uh, is really interesting, but like you have to start off playing the game with the normal HUD and then learn how the what the HUD mechanics and how the game mechanics work, and then you move into the immersive HUD. Now the first thing that I did was uh, change the controls. Like if you have played any God of War game before, and you also play with like square and triangle, light attack and heavy attack, and this for this game for whatever reason has R1 and R2 as the uh, uh, as the attack systems, change that immediately. Like if you're used to playing God of War like that, then then change it like immediately you want to change it uh repeated button presses i went from tapping which is there in every god of war game to like holding because i don't want to keep tapping the same button every time uh, i don't even know what the chisel thing is oh yeah there's certain well, basically uh, there's a glass door you have to find like three or four different uh slots and, and then tap them each once uh, and i basically never changed this but it's it doesn't even matter in the game if you want to make it even easier you can just switch over to single button and sort of like precision um sprinting is uh clicking l3 was the other option holding circle no because uh what you want to do is where'd it go oh it's in the control system is it no it's not no where is it game code oh it is okay so i'm in a combat system is classic uh, I think for you guys it maybe if when you start off the game it's gonna be R1 and R2 as heavy attack I went straight I didn't even go to flipped I just went straight to classic um, So yeah, so uh, squares my light attack triangles my heavy attack Armin's actually call and R2 is um, 
actions, uh, eight versus arrows and stuff. That's what I went, uh, went for. Interact and wait. I don't know what this does. Uh, I don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess you could change this, but I never changed this. I had circle as evade and X as interact, and uh, I have my scuff controller. So this is my circle and this is my uh, this is my interact. Like circle is to dodge and this is to interact with everything. So having a scuff in, in any game is is a is a blessing. So that's what I had. Lock on camera. Anyone log in? Oh, you want to have lock on camera enabled for like almost every fight, especially the Valkyries, which are the Valkyries or Valkyries, I don't know how you pronounce them, they're the strongest bosses in the game, you want to have any kind of fight, basically, you want to have, you want to lock on target, like, immediately, so always have the lock on target thing, enable quick turn is default, okay, what is the other one, option is this, option is this, oh, wow, that's, that's pretty complex, but I just had to press d-pad down, and I, ended up never using it there's only one reason why you ever want to use it but i ended up never using it i had the tu tutorial mode on and that was okay all right so besides that let me see what else is there chain the controls right of the bat right so go through the skills and what to upgrade first now when i okay i'm going to show you my loadout and uh the skills that i started off with so i'll show you the loadout afterwards because at this point i'm completely maxed out now if you take a look uh another reason i can use my mouse is because i have my capture card running on my pc that's how you guys can see me on my mouse uh, and the the whole thing is a second behind that's why I'm, I'm navigating through the menus a little bit slowly so at this point i have like 311,000 xp i didn't farm anything i just basically if you keep playing the game as you keep on moving into the game further and further there are arena modes in this game and the more you keep on playing the arena modes, the more XP you keep on getting. And hack silver you keep on getting. At this point, it says 244,000. I actually had over 500,000 uh, Glimmer. or Sorry, not Glimmer. The uh, uh, hack silver currency. And uh, I, I ended up uh, maxing out every single thing, which is why I'm at 244,000. So you don't need to farm hack silver or XP at any point. Even early game, you don't need to farm it. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to go through the skills at first, right? So let's go to the Leviathan Axe. Um, so the Leviathan Axe um let's see which one is it uh this is one of the more frequently used ones and i did use this at the start of the game but i i, I mean i found something that i felt was much better than this which is the one that i'm using uh, besides that they're all useless besides in my opinion they're pretty useless you, you can use them to have fun obviously but when you want to get into like big fights or proper fights when you want to do actual damage then the best one that I use is the Leviathan's Wake. It has 5 damage, a couple frost, and a little bit of stun. So the more important things in this game are really damage and stun, not really frost or burn or anything. So the more damage and stun you can get in most of the things, that uh, that's better. Damage, obviously, the more damage you do to something, stun. If you stun something, they can't, they can't attack you. Basically, they get a stun locked, and you can do even more damage with that. So the, the more damage and stun you can get in anything, the better it is. Um, the advantage of this one is it's aimed. So if you look at something, especially a Valkyrie or something that's a really small target, you want to have something like a Leviathan's Wake to do with. The other advantage of this thing is it has like an infinite range. So you can, if the Valkyrie is on the other side of the map, you can still shoot this and it's going to hit her and stop her in her um, inner tracks. Um, I will be making a video on Valkyries, but it's going to be a separate video because that, th those fights are insane. I'm going to go through like one, two, and three, the uh, the evolution of the Valkyries and how I improved my game and got better at that. So Leviathan, Leviathan's Wake is the best. Uh, Charge of White Bear, no crash. Uh, what is this one? This thing, like it on on paper, it's really good damage and frost, but it's kind of useless, especially because it does no stun. Basically, people just walk away from the entire thing. It's it's fucking useless. Strike of this thing. I don't even know what that does. Uh, yeah, no, no. Hell's touch. Uh, nope. Okay, I don't need that either. So, light one attack was that one. The best, best, best heavy attack in my opinion in this game is this one. The <clears throat> you just press L one and triangle, and you keep smashing, keep mashing triangle. He keeps on spamming. He keeps on mashing it. Uh, even on the hardest difficult, like the second hardest, not God of War. The the hardest difficult besides God of War. I've been playing that the entire game, and all Valkyries lose up to like a full health bar um with this the smash and you keep you keep getting this like every 34 seconds actually you get them even faster than 34 seconds i think i think i, I hope this isn't like uh controlled by all of my mods already but i think you can get them even faster because of the mods that you have in the game so this thing is really really strong and it's really strong for like valkars and main bosses so the tiny mobs like they, they get absolutely smashed by these um uh, besides that i don't even know if there's anything else really good let me see um yeah, this is something that, these are some of the ones that you get right at the start of the game, but they're pretty fucking useless in my opinion. Uh, nope, you don't want damage and frost. Again, all you really want is damage and stun. That's, this is the one we have. Damage and frost, what is this? Yeah, I've seen people use that, but not it's not really that useful. Nope, not that useful. Storm. This sounds, I've seen some people use this as well, but it's okay. It's not that, it's not that great. Especially not if you want to, if you want to kill like one or two people or target one or two people, that's not that good. 
Uh, so the next thing, oh sorry, not armor. So the uh, the shield. I don't know why the shield kind of doesn't have any XP or this that or anything in it. It's like I mean, you you start off with a couple of shields and that's it. It doesn't change anything. It they, they just look different and that's it. So there's nothing to do with the shield, unfortunately. Now, like obviously, if we've already reached here, it's kind of a bit of a spoiler. But yeah, you do get the blades of chaos in this game. So I'm sorry if this is a bit of a spoiler, but at the end of the day, if, if you're looking at, I'm not going to spoil the story for you guys at all, but like, yeah, you will get the Blades of Chaos at some point. Um, but I have to tell you guys how to be better at this game, so that's why I have to mention the Blades of Chaos as well. Okay, so this is the one that I use. Uh, it has uh, quite a bit of damage and uh, actually has a lot more burn than it does damage and stun, which is a bit surprising because I've actually used this really, really effectively. For the other ones, uh, Cyclone of Chaos. This one looks really sexy, so I, I use this one as well because it looked fucking sexy. But this, the the Nemean Crush is the one that I use on on the main bosses and Valkyries and stuff. Rampage of the Furies. Again, I use this one as well on main boss and Valkyries as well, and I use them on the small guys as well. As you can see, it does a lot of damage. Um, Rage of the Titans was nah, that was a stupid Icarus Storm. Yeah, that was okay. That was kind of lame in my opinion. Nope, stun one, don't need that. Uh, blast of the free. Okay, so I've seen some people use this again. It's okay. I mean, it gives you a little bit of everything, but not not the most important thing. Spartan charge. Um, yeah, I've used this a little bit, but it's it's not that good for like main bosses and stuff. So yeah, those are the those are the attacks that I've used for uh, Blades of Chaos. Oh, I haven't even gone to the front of this one yet. So the other one that I use is damage and burn in this one. It just does so much damage. That's what I use. <clears throat> the other thing that I use another one. Which one is it? Not this one. Fire of Aries? No, probably not. Tartarus. Probably Tartarus. This, yeah, this is the other one that I use because it does so much damage and stun, and it's a 34 second cool one. That's the other one I use. Uh, I think people are saying Hyperion Grapple is supposed to be really good. Let me see. Yeah, people keep saying Hyperion Grapple is really good. I can see that. I've seen people like Faraz Khan, like this amazing Dark Souls player, play this game, uh, and he uses this. I guess you could use it. I guess it may be really, really good. I haven't even thought about it, but um, the, I use the Hyperion Slam, it worked for me pretty, pretty well the entire game. <coughs> So let me oh, uh, let me go back into uh, the blade the the uh, the axe pommel that I'm using. So the pommel that I'm using is something that you get from a, a again store uh, spoiler free right. So there's a place there's a place called Nilfheim. The game never really tells you when to go there. I you just kind of basically unlock it when you're playing the rest of the game in the side missions and you end up going there. So the Mistborn thing, uh, as you can see, I've maxed it out to level 8. <clears throat> what it does is low priority activation to grant healing mist on anything. This basically makes you OP. Every time you hit anything with your axe, there's always a chance of it, like, initiating a healing mist. And the healing mist gives you health pretty fast, even on the on the hardest difficulty that I'm playing at. So this thing is actually pretty strong. Besides that, let me see what the other one was that I was actually using besides this. Um... I, no, it wasn't this one. Um, but but this seems pretty useful as well. Like if you give a low perk, I think this was the one because it's a level five. This is probably the other one that I was using. Low perk activation does kind of help burst on any successful ax ax hit. You're using your axe all the damn time. So if you if you get a help burst on it, that's exactly what you want. Um, this is probably another one because as you can see, all the level three ones that have maxed out are the ones that are important. Successful axe skills give you a grand of help burst. You're using your axe skill. You always get an axe skill. So you always get help back. Uh, so that's another important one. I forget, but I never actually used that one. I don't think besides that there's any good axe models. But the Mistborn one, I had to grind my ass off for it. But it is it is useful. Well, by the time I went to Nilfheim and I got my Mistborn and the rest of the armor as well from Nilfheim, I just became OP in this game. So... Uh, the axe, uh, the uh, blade pommel that I'm using, I'm using the power of the Valkyries. You had to kill a Valkyrie to get this one. Low priority activation, nine six of blade again, power of Valkyrie. You actually end up getting it. Uh, I actually end up getting it quite frequently. I don't necessarily know what it does, but it it it's pretty strong, and I just end up using it. Besides that, I'm just trying to see if there was anything else. See, I've used this at level six. The one. Gift of strength on any successful kill, but it's a low perk item. I used it, but I guess it wasn't that good. Mm. No, like if, if something locks you into like use this thing to get this thing, then you, you're, you're kind of focusing your entire game to try and use that. So I know we like using that kind of stuff. Uh, but this thing wouldn't blow me. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> so that's the best blade pommel that I use and it worked out amazing. Um, <clears throat> Atreus uh, maxed out completely. <clears throat> the Wrath of the Wolf is the best one in my opinion. I, and a lot of people seem to think that as well. Because it gives you maxed out damage and stun. It's 4 damage, 4 stun, 95 second uh, cooldown. This thing is so good, especially against Valkyries, which are the main bosses in the game. Bec and I'll show you when I use one against a Valkyrie. Well, that's going to be a different video, but I'm going to show you how, you how I use that. 
Um, the rest of them are kind of kind of lame. I've used I've t I think I've used every single one of them. Every single one of them, and they're all pretty lame. The murder of crows is also okay, but it doesn't stun as much. I mean, it does do some damage, but it doesn't stun as much. I, I end up not using this one. So those are those are all the weapons and uh, the things that I use there, right? Uh, now I do want to get into armor, but should I get an armor? Uh, okay, I'll get an armor first, I guess. So this is again, this is completely maxed out. I have absolutely everything in the game. Not the I've seen a lot of people say that uh, don't buy armor because the game ends up giving you armor. I think in I think in totality I got like five or six pieces of armor throughout the entire game, and I ended up using like two or three pieces, and that's it. So that's a lie you don't you don't end up getting armor everywhere like i don't know why people say that um i'm just trying to see if i actually have any good armor anywhere see see nope i probably never even use this <sighs> probably never even use this i know i use some blue armor but i've already sold it uh and i did max out that armor because it was pretty good so if you find some armor that has really really good stats that that you think this is gonna and when i say stats i'm not talking about stats like strength wounding defense or anything of that sort to be honest that's all garbage um what, what i mean by that is uh like these kind of stats like low perk activation to grand unstoppable aura on any successful hit so yeah it's a low perk but any successful hit you're always hitting something so there's always a chance of having an unstoppable aura you know so if you get something like that even on a blue uh then use it now i'm going to show you the strongest the strongest item that you can get in this game like hands down the strongest item for any fight anywhere anything uh it's this uh it's this amulet of kwasir thing I'm really surprised there's no epic version of this thing but I never so I have like a billion fucking amulets and like so many of them are epic and I haven't used a single one of them like I have used them here and there but I've never really used them uh, because I have that thing so here's the next best thing if you can get the talisman of the realm summon a realm ship that basically slows down everything that's that's basically what you want you can slow down everything so if I press L1 and X uh, it can slow things uh, in front of me especially again really really useful against boss fights and wild cards and stuff what is this blah 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 my name is. nope stupid uh like a defensive zone thing never useful i used it never useful against him but when you actually need it against like valgar boss fights or anything never useful charm from the storm storm nope so i'm just going to tell you what it is the amulet of kasir a last second dodge activates realm ship temporarily slowing down surrounding enemies upgrading this item increases the duration of the ship maxed it out all the way uh i don't know how i got a level six i don't remember where i got it you can just google it i'm sure someone's gonna tell you where, where to get it i never changed out of this thing i got it pretty early in the game i probably like 25 percent or 30 percent into the game so if i played like 60 hours i'd say like 20 25 hours or so i got this thing and i never changed after that i did actually change in the middle when i started getting like epic enchantments and stuff and that's that's the only so when i changed from this one that's the only time i actually lost a fight and that's the only time i actually reduced my difficulty from uh give me a challenge to like easy mode to defeat a valkyr which ended up being the the second hardest valkyr if not the hardest valkyr in the entire game uh her name is rota r-o-t-a when you meet her you'll find her why she's a fucking bitch but uh i ended up not using this thing so the thing is dodging is really important against valkyrs every time you dodge the last second you slow down the entire fight so when you slow down the entire fight you can just wreck any boss including a valkyr the, i didn't use this one and i regretted it i had to reduce the difficulty that's the only boss that actually reduces the, the reduce the difficulty to fight and get over uh, and that's because i didn't use this one if i use this one i would have wrecked her i'm pretty sure the other thing was i i that was the second valkyr that i fought which ended up being the second hardest of the hardest valkyr so I was not prepared for it at all. I had no armor or anything. Once you start, and I'm going to go through the armor, but once you start getting this kind of armor, you become so incredibly, incredibly overpowered and so incredibly strong that the other things and your skill per se in the game kind of don't really need to matter that much. Uh, however, you get these things so late in the game that by then your your skins are uh, your skills are already on like top notch. Like you already know how to dodge, parry, roll, everything of that sort. So I'm still going to go through these things, right? So I just recently, like just for the last um, Valkyr fights for Sigrun, I, I switched to the Valkyr armor. As you can see everywhere, it says Valkyr armor. Here it is the Valkyr, Gauntlets, and we escort the Valkyr. And a maximum out of level 8, this one needs something that I don't even know what it is. Um, so why I'm using these, low power activation to ground, unstoppable burn, any successful hit, obviously useful. Um, low power activation instantly refresh all runic attacks. So not only do, the, do my runics actually recharge at 24 seconds anyways, but there's a chance of it re uh, recharging immediately on a runic attack kill. So this isn't useful against a wild card, but it is useful against any other any other mob fight 
throughout the entire game. Uh, high perk or even arena fights. That's the best place. High perk activation also kind of blessing of runic when using a runic attack. So it'll give you a blessing of runic when you're using a runic attack. So and it's a high perk activation. So it's the best thing ever. Um, now I'm going to show you the uh, no why the epic ones are better and why I don't have any of the blue ones even though I did find a couple of good blue ones. The epic ones are better just because they give you uh, three socket and uh, enchantment sockets. So three here, three here, three here. Now if you go down to uh, what is it? The the talismans. Even here, there there are uh, are there three or just two? Two here, two enchantment sockets here, one enchantment socket. So there's a there's a way to get like more enchantment sockets. But this thing is just so incredibly strong that I don't need more enchantment sockets as much as I need the last second dodge. So I've deliberately stayed up blue over here and not gone to epic or anything. Uh, I'm trying to remember how I bought these. No, I, I didn't buy. You don't buy the wildcard ones. You have to kill the wildcards in order to get them. Uh, so th this is by far the strongest armor in the game. The second strongest armor in the game is something that you can buy from Nilfheim. And everything you do in Nilfheim just stays in Nilfheim, kind of like Vegas, yeah. Uh, but yeah, everything you do in Nilfheim stays in Nilfheim, and that's where you get the uh, this one. It's not really a story one. The story never tells you to go to Nilfheim. You go there by yourself and farm stuff by yourself. I will get. Uh, I will give you like a really small tip about if I'm farming later on in the game and what it is and how you can do it. Um, <clears throat> so this is the the Nilfheim one, right? Why did I select it? I already selected. Um, this is the Nilfheim one. So Miss Echoes, blah 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 blah. Okay, so this is basic. This basically makes you this this armor is based to stay inside Nilfheim, but it's also really good because it gives you a small amount of constant health regen. Now just before this one, I didn't have really that strong of armor that had that did anything this strong, so this was the best armor that I, that I could get. So this is the first armor that I got, but I still didn't upgrade it all the way because it's not that amazing. Um, same thing, I'm gonna go for this one, same thing, constant health regen. Uh, the advantage again, but the, the main reason why I bought the epic ones was because they had triple enchantment sockets. That's what I was using, the enchantment sockets. Uh, and then the same thing for this one, I guess. Yeah, same thing. So I'm just gonna quickly take you through the enchantment sockets that I'm, the enchantments that I'm actually using. It's gonna show as E, so it should be really easy to go through now. I hope. Oh, it doesn't actually tell you. Oh, it does. It just tells you the one that you have. Fuck. Uh, let me, let me, let me, let me. Hold on, how do I make this? Hold on, hold on. There has to be a way that I can uh, just show you guys all the ones that I'm already using. Oh, okay, so now it's coming up as E, right? <coughs> So the ones that I'm using, increase all frost damage by 15%. This is not that important, but if this is one of the things that I could add, so I just added that. Uh, the other one I'm using, nearby enemies within 15 meters of beacon. This is, I only switched to this one recently at the Sigrun, the final boss fight, the final Valkyrie fight. Um, besides that, high perk activation has to grant a health burst on any successful parry. You're going to be parrying throughout the entire game. So high perk activation to give you health on a successful parry is like OP level over 9,000. That's so strong. Um, besides that. What's the other stuff? Really? Where's the other stuff? There's no way. Like, where's the other stuff that I'm already using? I'm, I'm just gonna have to go through them, like... Yeah, I'm just gonna have to go through them manually, I guess. So... <clears throat> Sorry, I tried to go through that, but it, it didn't happen. So I'm gonna go through them manually, then. So the first one is increased frost damage. I told you guys that. 15 meat was vegan. Told you guys that. <clears throat> Successful party. Told you guys that, right? The next one. Uh, so I didn't find anything else. So I just did something. Like, you don't want to go for like low perk activation things if something is really stupid. If you put people in the air or something, especially if you're not gonna be shooting people up in the air, you're not gonna be using that attack. So that's kind of wasted. So I just went to, for something that gave me uh, certain stats all the time instead of like uh, having me do random things. Very low perk activation on of a weapon hit to grant per per protection of the wildcard, granting fifty percent resistance to all side effects. Okay, so very low perk activation, but any successful weapon hit, you're always hitting with your weapon, so it, it kind of it cancels it out. You, you're gonna have it pretty much all the time. Uh, the other enchantments that I use gain a burst of speed and travel, increase while evading. Evading is really important. It's basically rolling, so that that's really useful. Hyper activation to give you a health burst on running attack kill, um, which happens a lot in any kind of arena mode. Hyper activation to give you running on any successful fire. So really important. The more runics you use, the more health you get, and the more runics you use, the more the more uh, parries and, and stuff you use, the more runics you keep getting. So really important. <clears throat> the armor that I ended up with uh, for Atreus, I did start, when I started off, uh, so this is a trashy one, when I did start off, I, I started off with this one, Exposed Weakness and Enhanced Strikes, and then I figured out, because I was taking too much damage from the battle cards and stuff, I, I figured out that I should probably be going for Hellstone Assist, 
Um, and then I ended up finishing it off with the Hellstone one. The other uh, runics that you have with him, they don't really do that much. Like, his job is really to choke them temporarily so that you can do damage, not the fact that he's going to be doing damage to them. All his damage is really just the arrows. So you want to max him out, but you don't want to max out his armor in the sense like go expose uh, extra damage up in the air, blah, blah, blah. You, you really want to use him as a support system. So that's why I use him as uh, to give me more uh, health as opposed to anything else. This is the most important in the game. What skills that you should start off with and which ones you should be up upgrading and how soon and, and, and like that. So the first things first, uh, in all these four, um, what is it? All of these four tabs, this tab you kind of want to try and max out as soon as possible because this is this is atreus this is he's always there he's always charged and you don't really have to do anything for him he charges himself up so anything that you upgrade on this side is going to keep getting used all the time so i don't have to go through anything because at the end of the day you just you have to charge everything there's no there's no second uh questions about it obviously you will end up getting so much xp as you can see i have 311 thousand xp at the xp required to Upgrade any of these is like 1,000, 1,500, 2,000. The max they go up to is like 15,000, 20,000. So you're going to have XP for days. Uh, upgrade Atreus as soon as possible. But besides that, you really, really, really want to upgrade uh, Kratos' CQC combat. So close combat, right? So don't even think about uh, range as of right now. Let's just go to CQC. Anything that you have up here to start upgrading it. Triangle for Brutal Cleave. This is the very first thing that starts off. And there's a bunch of armor that gives you, like, as soon as you do this cleaving thing, uh, um, they start giving you health or stuff like that so there's a lot of armor that actually gives you stuff just based on this attack hit multiple enemies and hold. yeah so if you hold square i actually ended up never using this never but if you just hold square down he, he just twists the axe in front of their face and they take multiple damage i ended up never actually using this uh pray to the frost all this stuff is basic so always start off with the close combat stuff right always go for the close combat stuff and max it out <clears throat> i've never these things are highlighted because I, i'm i'm satisfying certain uh stat perks on my armor but i've never really thought about this and never actually used this i just want to quickly go through these things just so just so i can show you that this game is so vast and so varied like i've played it for 60 hours and only in the past 5 10 hours have i become amazing at the combat and even then i still don't use everything so if you have to you have to like start using and practicing every single thing as soon as you unlock it you have to start practicing it uh, practically otherwise you will not remember it and you have you have counters to every single thing. You have counters and parries, dodges, rolls to every single move for every single boss and every single thing. But the thing is, we don't know because we don't... <coughs> Once you start button mashing like 3-4 combos and you just start using 2 or 3 runics attacks, that's all you keep on doing. And I fall into the same habit as well. So you want to keep practicing every single one of these things. Like when you evade from a uh, Valkyrie, if you go back and you press square quickly, you're actually doing damage in a really short time frame where, where where otherwise you would not have been able to press square triangle and do anything else so you quickly dodge and do this and he, and he throws his axe out and brings it back so make sure to practice these things all the time uh then profound quick send this nope that's not that's okay nope don't need that um oh, okay i mean these things are important but you'll end up never using a you don't end up never using the square one always try and upgrade the triangle ones they always give you more damage if you're going to be running towards anyone anyways always do the triangle one instead of the square one so <coughs> you can upgrade both of these i did at the end of the day but you have the option to do only one just do this one first uh let me just take a look uh, quick look at this one this is really important man this is super important i'm going to show you this thing live actually um so like yeah i can just show you this thing i'll just, I'll just go through this first quickly unlock a second one unlock a third one <clears throat> okay cool um so i'll show you this now again i'm i'm one second behind so uh so i'm just gonna tap it once and see he's gonna change the stance so you see the new stance right so that's when you want to tap square again to get the other attack the alternate attack. so he, i'm just gonna mash square right now watch this Right? The axe is in his hand. Right? So that's that's mashing square. Whoops. See, that's the thing. My capture card is like, puts me a second behind, so I kind of don't see what I'm, what I'm doing and where I'm going. Um, I'm just going to add triangle to the to, to the button mash. Square, 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 and then triangle. There you go, right? So, but the axe has still not left his hand the entire time. Fucking, okay. There you go. Now watch, watch the other moves. See that? So this thing does like, four or five hits of damage every time it leaves your hand and it comes back into your hand again this is super important 
I played 60, 65 hours, and I ended up using this after killing every single boss, and then finally going into the arena, I was like, oh my god, I haven't actually used this fucking shit. If I use this on the Valkyrie or something, you don't have to button mash it there. You just have to quickly tap, 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 and it does like four, four, five, five hits every time it goes around. So these things are really important and really strong, but we end up never using them. I'll just show you, like, there's a there's a combo with a, with a heavy attack in this as well, so watch this. See that? So all of these hits, they actually come back to you inside your hand. You want to use these things. The second you unlock them, you want to start practicing using them. I, I did not, and I wasted so much time, dude. Like, you want to start using these things yourself. So max out the entire close combat tree, right? Then after that... Um, this kind this thing is kind of kind of silly. Range combat isn't really that important. You just want to unlock the basics. The yeah, blah 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 blah. These things are really basic, and they're like the this is kind of completely pointless. Like aim and hold triangle uh, square to hit like three things. It doesn't really do any any kind of damage. It's it, it's like it's like you're sending out flies to like bite them, stab them, like tap 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 tap. It's like it's stupid. You don't need to unlock any of those things, so don't waste your time on that. Barehanded, you can do this. Oh, this thing is super important. Now, once again, between the square one and the and the triangle one, you have to aim at someone and then press triangle. So this you will again, you will watch this when I'm playing against the wildcar. But um, you have to throw the wildcar, uh, the axe on your wildcar anytime she goes up in the air. So once you throw the axe, it's not with you. But now you want to go run into her and damage her as well, right? So you keep running into her, and then you press the aim button, and then you press triangle, and then he does, and you end up smashing her with the axe as well. So you don't need to pull the axe back. You don't need to bring the axe back and then run towards her. So remember these things. I, I did this only on the final Valkyrie, even though I, I unlocked the skill at like 30% of the game or 50% of the game or something. And I only ended up using this in the last 5-10% of the game. If not just the final boss. Um, the, ooh, the, the shield does something? This thing is really important. The double tap L1, we ended up we end up not using it that much, but you should use this because it actually breaks other people's uh it stuns them, it puts them back, and then you can just keep on valving them. So make sure to use that. I never ended up using this. Like I've actually never used this the entire game that I've played. So I don't even know what that what the heck that does. That's what I'm saying. You have to learn these things. Hold up for and yep, never use that ever. I use bare fisted a lot. I'll go into bare hand combat in a second. I use bare hands a lot. I never ended up using any of these. Uh Nope, never use that either. Yeah, I used that, but that was okay. Yeah, never use them anyways. Okay, this one I've used, that's pretty useful. Try not lying or not showing the slam. This one I've used as well, that's pretty useful as well. This one I've used as well. Uh, I haven't practiced this one, but if you do practice this, it's actually really good and like really. Um, if there's a lot of people around in the arena, this thing, you can just, just keep, keep taking the arrows and the. Fire from one of the one of the opponents, uh, like one of the enemies, and then start shooting them at the other one. That's actually really useful. Um, I never use the alternate combat. I just I don't know why I haven't. And to be honest, this the alternate combat might even be much much better than the other than the bare barehanded combat by default. And I'll explain to you why the barehanded combat by default is also very important. Um, but that's gonna come in a bit. Okay, what is the rage combat? Rage combat is really good. Uh, blah blah blah. Yeah, square thing is really important. Square thing again, really important. Uh, country of Black Square. Yep, really important, right? The useless stuff in this thing, the L1. That's really useless. There's no need to upgrade this, at least if you're low on XP or the game, do not upgrade that. The triangle thing is not that useful. It's okay. But but here's why you want to upgrade this tree, because this thing at the end, the L2 to pick up a Spartan Rage and the Seething Earth thing, this thing does so much damage to any of the opponents, including Valkyrs. It just, it takes about, it takes out massive chunks of anyone's health bar. So if you activate Spartan Rage and you don't want to punch someone, you can just keep throwing these rocks at them. But you want to lock on with R3 first, and then you want to keep throwing these rocks at them, and it, it just does insane, insane amounts of damage. So you want to unlock the final tree first. Uh, forget this one, and this one. This one's really important. This one's really important. You can forget this one in the beginning. Uh, let's quickly get into Blades of Chaos. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Melee combat. What do I mean melee combat? Pretty good. Blah blah blah. Um. Yeah. Kind of use that. Never really. This thing is important. Uh, is this the one? Yeah, this is the one. This is kind of important, so you want to unlock that and use that. Uh, just never, yeah, never ended up using this ever. So, uh, check all. Yep, that's stupid as well. What's this? Yeah, use that, but not. It's not amazing. It's okay as well. So evasion and evasion and blades of chaos. Uh, blades of chaos basically end up end up really useful against um uh, against hordes like. 
as soon as he has uh, as soon as you have multiple enemies coming towards you you want to start using this thing um what is this yeah i'm never i never use this thing i never use the switch dance thing switch dance again switch dance again i mean i ended up using it by mistake but it never really did anything to me i don't know why because my whole point of using a blade of chaos is to is to do like area of effect area of effect damage and not really like individual damage so i'm like there's no point of that um there's i can't really think of anything it, it, the beginning things you can you want to unlock immediately by the time you get to blades of chaos you're gonna ha you're gonna start having xp enough to upgrade everything in blades of chaos so i don't really have to take you through this stuff i'm just trying to see if there's something that's really important that i want you to be like this is really important the pulling people towards yourself is actually very important in this game you want to do that tw uh, towards the end uh like not towards the end you just want to learn how to, uh, and do that this thing is also very important i've used this all the time if you decide about that Okay, that's cool. Aim with a strong level in it. Yeah, I never used this. Never ended up using that. Nope, never used that either. Oops. Yeah, never used that. Yeah, I've used this. It's the same thing. Okay, they, these things are kind of stupid. Okay, that's fine. And finally, go to Towns Boy. I told you you gotta upgrade all of this, anyways. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Finally done it. Finally done. Oh my god, that, that was really long. Okay, so let's go to the other stuff. How long is this? Are you kidding me? Fucking 36 fucking minutes. Anyways. Um, alright. Well, it's if it's important, it's important, right? Um, CQC Atrius upgrades. <clears throat> yeah, so you want to go through skills and what to upgrade first. Always go through the CQC ones and the Atrius upgrades. Bare handed combat is really important. There will be uh, certain times in this game where you where people will either regenerate health or you have to kill them. E There'll be times where you where your where your uh axe isn't doing the damage that you wanted to do, and your even your blades of chaos aren't doing the damage that you wanted to do. Any any time that that such sort of a situation happens, switch over to your bare fist. And once you switch to your bare fist, the the stun meter goes up like a rocket. Once it goes up like a rocket, you just eliminate them. So that's the best way to to kill people that that keep on regenerating health. Uh, go for that. Oops, sorry. Chain runics. Uh, this is really important in um. I mean, I I mean, I can show you, I guess, but like this is really important. It's all in my Valkyrie uh, kill, so I'll show you I'll show, show you later on. Basically, left on the D-pad is your Blade of Chaos. Right on your D-pad is your uh, is your axe, right? But I never use R uh, right on the D-pad to get the axe. I always use the the bring the axe out. You know, when you recall the axe, I use that as R1 for me. So I sw start from the Blaze of Chaos, press L1 and Square, and press L1 and Triangle to get both my rune attacks, uh, runic attacks out there. And then quickly switch, uh, bring the axe up with R1, and then do the same thing, L1 Square and L1 and Triangle. So you have four runic attacks in a row. And then if you have armor that increases damage or it gives you more runics on doing a runic attack, then you just basically keep on chaining more runic attacks. So make sure to chain them, they do the maximum amount of damage. There's no need to farm XP or uh, hack silver, though if you do, there's a method that's better. So there's a there's a video out there that basically tells you how to farm XP. I was thinking about that in the beginning, but it's actually not that important. You don't need to be farming XP. I'll show you. I'll show you something else though. How you can basically, if you you want to farm XP, uh, there's things like um, use the talisman ability sixty times, right? I ended up never using this thing because I, as I told you, I used the dodge one, not this one. So. So the, the way that people uh, farm XP is basically you, you do the parry thing, you get up to 99 and, and to do 100, uh, you do 100, you get the 3,500 XP, then you save the game, then you reload the game, reload the game. And then you go back and you do the same thing again because it goes down back to like 99 something or something of that sort. Uh, watch the video just just so you're clear how to do it. But the, the person does it with only 3,500 XP. Here's the other way you can do it. Uh, so use this thing bring it up to 60 uh, bring it up to 59 right bring this up to 59 use your talisman ability first and then um, Throw your axe throw your axe and freeze them so you get 30 with that so you get 3500 XP there 3500 XP there uh, The wall thing doesn't happen everywhere And then if the if you're still doing the parry thing you do the parry and you get 3500 there So you can basically stack up 3500 3500 3500 3500 like four times or five times in just one kill and then you save the game, reload again, so you end up getting like 15,000 XP every time that you do that thing, instead of getting 3,500 XP. So if you want to farm XP, that's a way to do it, but like I said before, there's no need to do it, because once you get into nil farm and muscle farm, where you have to go by yourself, those are the places that you're going to keep getting infinite XP anyways. And the game really does shower you with XP, I don't really think I ever felt the, the like I was like lacking XP anywhere. Uh, Nilfheim, Musclefheim, uh, crap, right? So Nilfheim, uh, again, Nilfheim, Musclefheim, both places you have to go by yourself. The game doesn't tell you to go there. Nilfheim is a place where the the area just, it's a pain in the ass by itself. Once you go there, you'll find out. I started off at the hardest difficulty there. It gave me a challenge. And then I found out, okay, this is a, an incredibly stupid waste of time. 
I immediately switched back down to like easy mode, farm everything that I needed to farm, get all my armor and all the guns and the Mistborn, the best axe model that I told you guys, I showed you guys. Um, I finished all of that in like five or six hours of farming, and that's it. Fix six hours of Nilfheim, and that's it. I didn't even get every single thing. I didn't unlock every single thing in Nilfheim. I just got the important armor and the axe model that I wanted, and that's it. Six hours of farming. And that's because I played it on easy, and even there, I fucked up a couple of times. You want to watch a video or two about how to farm Nilf Nilfheim? But um, yeah, just do that. Go to easy mode. Don't make it a pain in the ass. Buy the armor first because it helps you farm Nilfheim even more. Don't buy weapons or anything of that sort first. Buy the armor first because it, that's going to help you farm Nilf Nilfheim much easier. That's my tip on Nilfheim. Uh, quick run. Oh, so, so that's it. So finally we're done. Finally we're done. But these are some super quick random tips. So if I lose health, right? Um, do I have health here? Yeah, I do have health. Okay, so if I'm losing health, all I have to do is go to one of these quick fast travel things. I don't, how do I activate this X? Yeah. So I just I go here and he basically heals himself up when he's doing this animation. So anytime you're low on health, just do this thing. You don't even need to go anywhere. You just just click on that thing and you and you basically get health back. Um, open door, quick heal, no need to walk. Just okay. So if if I get inside them, once you get get in the fast travel for the first time, you realize you have to go through there and it takes you to like another a place where you basically come out to the other side. You don't have to walk around in the circle in there. It's just a time limited thing. You just go in there, stand, go get a drink of water or something, and that's it, or play on your phone or something. And in like 30 seconds or something, the door will open up in front of you. You don't have to go and find a door. That's something that I realized in the game. The Executioner's Cleave. This is what the Executioner's Cleave is, right? Oopsies. So, oh, you guys can see that. So the holding triangle down, this is the Executioner's Cleave. Now, it's, now you see how long it takes that, for that, right? So all, well, the other alternative that you can do for that is press triangle first and then you then you hold triangle again so you press triangle triangle that basically lifts them up in the air and then and and then you hold down triangle and then that that holding down triangle basically goes into the executioner's sleep so that's what i'm trying to say like you don't have to you don't have to waste time before doing any damage to do the executioner's sleep you can just do that thing uh there's another really quick tip right there quick dodge continues your combo that's exactly what i was thinking as well so if i press so let's see square square Oh, actually, you know what? Okay, okay. Let's try with the, let's try with this one. So this. Oh, I didn't do that. Fuck. Um, I don't know if I'm slow or because of the capture card or. Oh, you didn't do that. Okay, never mind. So I'll show you once again. Um, let's do the basic one, I guess. Oh. See, I can't do it because I can't time it because the capture card in itself is like a second and a half before behind what I'm doing. So I can't time these things properly. But <clears throat> if you quick dodge, you just press circle once. This is a quick dodge. This is a quick dodge. This is a roll. Double tapping it is a roll. Quick dodge, quick dodge. So if you if there's a combo square, 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 triangle, you can do square, square, square. And then you can quick dodge and then press triangle and it'll still do the, the entire thing. Like you don't lose it. If you do square, square, square and then you dodge, you don't lose the entire combo. So that's something that's really important that I realized in the game. Uh, and the other thing is experiment with everything really slowly. Like I told you before, uh, I'm 65 hours in the game, 70 hours in the game, I'm done. And I still haven't used the bare-fisted alternate combat or something. And I only started using this one, the one that you can see on, on your screen, like where I'm rotating the axe around like that. I just recently learned that. So you want to start, just learn the game, learn the skills as you go. So don't farm XP because you're going to unlock everything, but you're not going to use everything. But the thing in this game is you have to learn how to use every single thing because every single thing in this game is really important and that's what makes Kratos so strong. Um, this game was amazing, the Valkyries are amazing, they're the best boss fights in the game, uh, in in quite a few games in fact. They are annoying, I'm not going to lie, they are definitely annoying. Uh, but you have to learn, like it, the first Valkyrie was a pain in the ass, the second one was an absolute bitch, that's the one that I gave up on. But then after that as I kept on getting better, the game kept on getting better, the game realized how to fight, how to fight, how to fight, that's how I kept on going. So I'm going to make a video for the Valkyrie boss fights as well and basically how I learned how to play the Valkyrie boss fights. Uh, and that's where you'll see uh, the things that I learned in my Valkyrie boss fights. But yeah, the game is amazing. It goes on forever. I The way that I played it, I did pretty much all side quests and all exploring every single opportunity that I got. Even though everything is locked in the beginning, I did all exploring and everything that I got. And then I, and then I went back to the places again once I unlocked the things for, further on in the campaign. So yeah, this game is amazing. It's absolutely brilliant. I know this is a 40 minute video, but uh, hopefully you guys get something out of it. Um, just forward it if you want to, to get to the parts that you found important. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that one. I shall see you guys next time.